Hey there, West Michigan. Thanks for watching 13 plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barons. It has been another cloudy start to the weekend out there, but the temperatures have been at least a little bit warmer than average. We're going to stay cloudy as we head into Sunday, but we're also going to factor in some snow. Some of the first snow that might actually stick around a little bit that we've seen here in well, well about a couple weeks. As far as what we're looking at for temperatures that we've seen out there today, it hit a high of 32 in Grand Rapids, 35 Muskegon, 33 in Holland. Those temperatures above average for this time of the year just by a bit, but on target with the forecast told you 33 hit 32 accuracy streak at two weeks in a row with just five misses in the last month forecasting. When it comes to tomorrow, temperatures will be very similar to today. That's why 13 weather balls lit up in green as no real changes for seen blinking bright as those snow chances are in sight. View the 13 weather balls sponsored by Countryside Greenhouse of Allendale. We're looking at temperatures this hour about 10 o'clock that we're hanging around in the low 30s across West Michigan. Temperatures not going to go too much further south from here because the winds will be coming in from a southerly direction as we head through tonight. It's going to really help to keep temperatures pretty stable through the overnight hours tonight. In fact, over the next 24 hours, we're expecting low 30s to remain in place through tonight with snow chances starting to pop up as we head into the early AM hours of your Sunday. Snow will last into Sunday afternoon before before starting to fade as we go into Sunday evening, temperatures will be in the mid 30s for highs as we work your way through Sunday. 30 the overnight low tonight as scattered snow moves in Sunday. Scattered snow sticks around. Expect about an inch of accumulation, maybe a little more, a little less, depending on where the heaviest uh, snow showers push through. But again, that wraps up Sunday night, Monday, mostly cloudy with another quick burst of snow that comes through as we head into Monday evening and overnight into early Tuesday. 34 your high on Monday. The Radar out there is nice and quiet as of Saturday evening, but the snow that's heading our way is getting ever closer. It was already pushing into portions of northern Illinois by 10 o'clock. That's going to continue to track toward us as we work our way through the overnight and again push in as we head towards Sunday morning. Hour by hour forecast here shows the cloud cover staying in place with a few areas of light snow moving in as we head past the midnight hour. That becomes more widespread as we work our way through sunrise Sunday morning. Scattered snow showers all across West Michigan as we head throughout the day on Sunday. These will start to lose their punch as we head into the deeper hours of the afternoon and by the evening start to completely fade out here across West Michigan with mostly cloudy skies that stick around as we head into Monday. These clouds actually clearing some as we head toward Monday afternoon, but it's a clearing that doesn't last very long. More clouds and another quick burst of snow comes in as we head toward Monday evening and the early AM hours of your Tuesday with cloudy skies expected to stick around on Tuesday. Tuesday. When it comes to snowfall totals out of the system again, we're not expecting a lot about an inch, maybe a little more, a little less depending on where you're at, but this isn't going to be a prolific snowmaker. We do have a better shot at some wider spread and heavier snow accumulations as we head deeper into the week. In fact, Wednesday going to be the day of most concern as we watch the system push toward our south, pushing snow into West Michigan. We're going to keep a close eye on the storm track though, because if that low pressure goes further to the south, South, we could miss out on most of the snowfall, but for right now we're expecting that snowfall throughout the day Wednesday as that system pushes by lake effect snow sticks around as we head through Thursday and into Friday again could leave behind some accumulation. We're going to keep our fingers crossed that the snow lovers might actually get a little bit of snow here in January. When it comes to temperatures for your Sunday, we're looking at low to mid 30s along the lake shore. That's scattered snow moving in for your Sunday temperatures in the northern zones in the low to mid 30s as well with mid 30s from Grand Rapids down to Kalamazoo. High Sunday, mostly around 35. 13 on your side, 10 day outlook. <laughs> Temperatures continue to stay near to above average through the first half of the forecast, but after we get past that snow system Wednesday, we do see a little bit of a drop in the temperatures back down to near average. We stay with some mild chances for lake effect snow Thursday, Friday, even into the weekend. Some wintry mix Sunday and Monday near the end of the 10 day, and then some cold air finally on day 10. Look at that high of just 20 degrees. <laughs> While our winter weather has been underperforming this year, a new list from Angie.com shows the top 10 snowiest cities in the U.S. 
And given the trends, you may be shocked to learn that several in West Michigan actually made the cut. Let's take a look at how that happened. The list here, the top 10, is only looking at meteorological winter. That is December through February. And this list was averaged from data that went from 2016 through 2021. Not a lot of places in the U.S. saw very heavy snowfall during that time period. So what we did pick up in Muskegon and in Grand Rapids was enough to make the top 10, but actually lower than our historical 30 year averages. Here's a look at that data In a usual meteorological winter. We see about 60 inches in Grand Rapids and 71 inches in Muskegon. So even though our averages did make that list again, it is below the normals. Uh, this year we had a benefit in Grand Rapids from the heavy snows in December, but otherwise we've been pretty quiet so far. 40 inches in Grand Rapids, just about 18 in Muskegon. The difference from where we should be at the end of February, about 20 inches in Grand Rapids and about 53 in Muskegon. So can we make it to an average year this year? Well, here in January, we're going to need a little bit more snow in Grand Rapids to get us uh, close to where we should be when you factor in that December. And then if we get an average snow in February, we could actually make it there. That's even despite the uh, well underperforming January totals. Now, what about Muskegon? Muskegon well, they're going to need to overperform in January. We're nowhere close where we should be for the month with barely any snowfall in February. We should see about another 20 inches. So if we hope to make up that gap of about 53. We are going to need a lot of snowfall in not a lot of times. In fact, about 1.3 inches every day. What we would need to get back on track. The February outlook for precipitation is above average, so there is a small chance that we might actually start to see some more snow, but it's all going to depend on the temperature. And right now, those could really go either way, warmer or colder. So fingers crossed for those snow lovers. Now, speaking of winter, this weekend is the Great Skate at Winterfest. It returned for the first time in several years. It started Saturday at noon and is sponsored by the Grand Rapids Griffins to raise money for their youth foundation. On Saturday night, starting at 10 o'clock, so pretty much right now, the 24-hour skating marathon began with Griffins players and coaches on the ice at Rosa Park Circle. It runs until 10 o'clock Sunday night. The event is free, but donations are encouraged. Again, they go to that youth foundation. Skating, though, will cost $4 for adults and $2 for kids. More information can be found at griffinshockey.com forward slash great skate. Sponsored by the Power of Poison exhibit at the Grand Rapids Public Museum. And uh, getting away from the snow and on to flooding concerns that typically follows our winters here in West Michigan. And when it comes to the maps that tell you where the flooding uh, is going to be most likely, well, they haven't been updated in a number of years. In fact, going on 50 years for some location, but that is now starting to change. And here's why that matters to you. If you were to try to look up your flood risk map right now, all you would find is a scan of an old paper map that tells you where the highest risk are. Those date back to the 70s and to the 80s. That will change next month when newer digital maps will be uploaded online. These maps are important because they let people know where the highest flooding risks are and that lets communities decide whether or not they want to participate in the National Flood Insurance Program. Of course, that program lets you get policies to cover flood damage to your home as most homeowners and renters policies do not cover that kind of damage. Matt Acapente from the state of Michigan tells us a little bit more about why these these maps are so important to you as a homeowner. The reason that it's important to homeowners and to business owners is that those maps are used by lenders. Um, if a lender is going to issue uh, any type of federally backed mortgage, they're typically going to require flood insurance as a condition of that mortgage for the length of that mortgage. A normal homeowner's policy will not cover flood damage. So that Really, a flood insurance policy is the only way to cover against loss for floods. So this is something that sometimes people don't find that out until it's too late, and that, that's a really bad situation to be in. 
Now the floodplains that you're usually going to see in those maps are the 100 year and the 500 year. So I want to show you a little bit more about what that exactly means. Of course, if you're along a river, the riverbank's normal levers are well contained. A minor flood may uh, come up above those normal river levels and maybe up over the banks, but it probably won't affect too many people. The 100 year floods are where we start to get into some pretty bad flooding conditions. Now that doesn't mean a flood that happens only once every 100 years. It's really more of a statistical probability as in there's about a 1% risk in any given year for this type of flood happening. So that can happen multiple times in one year or it can happen in back to back years. Now the 500 year flood, a much worse flood, but also a statistical term. It doesn't mean every 500 years. It means about a 0.2% risk in any given year of this type of flood occurring. And those are the areas that they want to be most highlighted on the maps for people that should should carry some kind of flood insurance. So if you find yourself in the new maps and again they come out on the 23rd of February, you may want to consider purchasing a flood insurance plan. Of course, if you have a mortgage and you have to carry flood insurance, Matt said your lender will reach out to you if you're now highlighted on the map when you previously weren't. Now that you know more about the weather here in West Michigan and some weather related stories from the past week, you can always find more online at 13onyourside.com and of course by downloading the 13 on your side news and weather apps. For now, thanks for watching 13 plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Behrens.